Stephen, firstly, what did you learn from the draw against Plymouth? That we are a very good side. Um, I never had a doubt that we were a good side, but sometimes you get lost in the results and the emotions of the results. And as I said repeatedly, I thought we came away from what we'd done on Tuesday night against Cheltenham and Saturday very much got back to it. We pressed really well, but we passed the ball. We, you know, you control the game when you've got the ball, not when they've got the ball. And, you know, out of possession as well, I thought we were very good. I thought we were very organised and disciplined and, you know, against a top of the league side. You talked before the game about concentrating more on attacking because defending wasn't what you do best. And yet you seem much tighter on Saturday as well. But when you have the ball, they can't score, you know, so, you know, make no mistake, we, we work and defend and we work on back four stuff all the time, our set plays, um, and it's, um, it's a huge part of the game, but we are, sometimes when, you know, I put Ant in midfield, where he's played lots of times, sometimes it detracts from what you're really good at, and you, you can't forget what you're really good at, and sometimes results make you forget why you were successful, relatively successful early on in the season. And I thought we got back to that on Saturday, and it's now, uh, you know, a chance to maintain that against another very good football inside. There could be an argument you should have got all three points, but how important was it to get a point just to stop that losing run? Yeah, I mean, we've lost three games and you know in the league and um, you know to get a point stops that rot, so to speak. And it also gives the players a lot of belief. You know, you can coach and you can convince them they're good players, but results convince you you're a good player, with, especially with this group of boys or you know, don't speak a lot and you know, results mean everything to them. So what was also massive was the fans, how much they got behind the boys, even you know, when they equalised quite quickly afterwards, nobody got on anybody's back. And I, I don't think fans realise how important that is and it's it's absolutely huge for us. Yeah, it's interesting. I in the crowd, you can start getting used to these 4,000 plus attendances rather bizarrely after years of low attendances, but it still makes a difference. Oh, massively, you know, and you know, to see the crowd come again, over 4,000 home fans, and really get behind the team, you know, and encourage, I, I know, again, I repeat myself, it's a young bunch of boys learning the game, make mistakes, and the fact that they stick with them through thick and thin, I think you can see that everybody here is given 100%, even if you make mistakes. You mentioned Anthony O'Connor in midfield for the Cheltenham game. You brought Callum in for Plymouth. It shows the competition you've got, doesn't it? Particularly in that part of the, the setup. I think Callum's been quite unfortunate. You know, Alfie and, and Shane have probably been my mainstay in midfield, along with Toombs, and they've been excellent. But, you know, somebody's misfortune gives somebody else a chance, and Callum certainly took it. He's, we, we think he's a very good footballer. Um, it took him a little while to adapt to League One football and, and maybe what we wanted from him. But he's got an open mind, which is great, which is refreshing in the game. He wants to learn, and... You know, he's got his chance, so hopefully he takes it again on Saturday. Jonah Ayunga scored the goal and, and put in a terrific performance as well. Again, taking that pressure off Cole Stockton. Yeah, we can't continually rely on Cole. You know, there's going to be periods where he won't score and he'll miss a couple of chances like he did on Saturday. Um, but Jonah's a big threat for teams. You know, he's got everything. I mean, he's six foot two, he can run both feet. So you always question why are you at this level because he should be playing at a higher level. And we have to get consistency out of him now. Remain fit, first and foremost. But get that consistency and we've got a very good player on our hands. And is it at this level a lot to do with confidence as well? I think in every walk of life, confidence is huge. You know, if, if you go to work every day and somebody tells you you're not very good, you know, you start believing it. If you don't get success, you, you start believing you're maybe not quite as good. And you know, footballers are emotional people, are human beings. And when you don't win games or you make mistakes, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. But you could see... We started well, so the confidence rose. You know, we started really well at the start of the second half and the belief you know, came flooding back as opposed to the Cheltenham game where we, we looked a little bit short of confidence. But, and that's going to happen. We're going to have spells where that happens. Results dictate emotions and you know, I have to keep convincing them they're a good set of players. So Oxford now, as you say, another challenge, but an opportunity to put an end to that losing away run. Yeah, they are a good side. Um, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of Oxford. We've been lucky enough, a lot of the teams we've played, I've been able to watch Oxford and Carl's done great with them, play a, a brilliant brand of football, a game which is refreshing. And it'll be a good football match, two teams trying to go at it, press high and, and you know, pass the ball. But they're, they're a threat. They've got some very good players. Next player of mine, Alex Goran, um, some Northern Ireland internationals, Mark Sykes and Gavin White. Taylor up front, you know, they've got, they've got good players throughout the team. I could, I could name them all. Cards built that team over a, a period of time and you know probably what we were trying to emulate really we're trying to get to that stage where we've got a squad as strong as him who've got an identity and style like Oxford and you know it's a it's a good club to aim for really. We talked about Ayunga but he went off injured near the end of the game is he okay? He had cramp in every part of his body he said so that's what happens when you work hard you know and we looked at our statistics and and Cole and Arthur and Jonah, their, their statistics were they, they run 11k and that's massive amount of running but that's that's 
the that's not the average or above average that's what we expect of them every week because when they do that they give us a great platform to play from Jonas was just pure tiredness and you know he needs to do that week in week out and chatting to Cole Stockton just now he's played every minute of every game hasn't he in, in the league I might take him off if he said that then so um, he wasn't complaining uh, <laughs> no he doesn't he's a good boy he just gets on with it you know he does he you know he's scoring the goals he's not changed he's led the line terrifically you know got player of the month and he's not changed that's a, a key to being a good character and being successful and yeah and we need him to play every minute you know we haven't had loads of options up front we've got Arthur struggling a little bit possibly for Saturday so you know we're still a couple of weeks away from John O'Baker and Courtney Doof has been fit but, you know, Cole has been terrific for us. Joan and I helping them out. And between Wes and Arthur giving us that balance and width.